Open mic time now. Former Cowboy Tony Casillas here. Cowboys improved to five and one, winning at Lambeau Field, just as we had all predicted. Yeah, I right? think so. But we all said five and one, and then we saw we predicted that uh, a running back was going to rush for over. 130 yards in four straight games. And oh, by the way, Dak Prescott was going to be five and one. Yeah, we, we said that, right? Yeah, you texted me during the game <laughs> saying maybe, maybe Dallas is just this good, and, and maybe they are. But the quarterback question is now hotter than ever. Uh, five of six starts won by Dak. Now the bye week, Romo might be healthy enough to play coming out of that. But Jimmy Johnson is among those who's changed his tune earlier, supporting bringing Romo back. But now, not so much. Initially, I was for Romo, but watching Prescott against Cincinnati, it's his football team. Romo should be the best, most talented, most expensive backup in the league. Romo can make big plays, but sometimes those big plays, they were for the other team. He should be on the bench and come off the bench. Aikman, Staubach, today Brett Favre, you heard Jimmy uh, agreeing that you don't mess with this chemistry. I happen to agree with that as well. Tony, and I do too. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't think you're, right now with the way the momentum is. Uh, I will say this: that that Dak Prescott going into this game, I was a little bit reserved whether to give him the keys. But I've given him the keys. We always talk about tapping the brakes. Well, I'm driving my car wide open because every week, and it, it just seems to me that he etches himself as the guy, the future of this this team, but definitely the future of this of this franchise going into the playoffs with number four. And the thing is, every week it's like an excuse is made for the other team. Well, Cincinnati isn't what we thought it was. Well, Aaron Rodgers isn't what we thought it was. But he became just the second Cowboy quarterback, Romo is the other one, to win at Lambeau Field today. So Dak has passed every test. Seeing the field well, did finally throw an interception today. But again, we talk about it every week. It's the decision making that's pretty impressive. And we're game. talking about he finally threw an interception yeah. over 170, you know, after 177 attempts. Uh, again, I, you look at the game today, certainly in Green Bay, and, and we talked about this when we came on the air. To, I was more impressed with the first drive at Lambeau Field because we, the question is, 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 it, is the element bigger uh, than, is the game bigger than what yeah, he's made sure. it over the last three, you know, four games? And it wasn't. I mean, it, it's, it's vintage yeah. Prescott leading the team down. 80 yards and scoring a touchdown and then right at halftime. Yeah, that was impressive. Let's talk about that drive. Uh, they ran it well for one thing today. And I don't want to overlook Zeke by any uh, means. 157 yards rushing. But one drive to find the game. They started at their own three right before halftime. Whitehead on that play call, which was really gutsy. Dak drives him 97 yards. And what isn't getting talked about a lot this year, the kind of game that Linehan is calling week in and week out. And I think, you know, you look at the playbook, and, and it's not a simplified playbook. It's, it's coaching to uh, a quarterback and your team strengths. That's run the football play action. And I don't think a lot of, not, a, not enough credit is given to Scott Linehan or Jason, Jason Garrett, but I think they've done a great job, brilliant job, at just bringing him along, giving him a little bit every week. And, you know, that, you know, that last drive, going into halftime, you know, Terrence Williams makes a tremendous play on the defensive back. And, and I think just going into that and with a minute left, you're thinking about let's just take the lead in the half and we'll come out the second half and see if we can continue. No, they took it down and scored in five plays. That was impressive. And that just changes the attitude for, for guys who I think already believe in this quarterback. Confidence. They look yeah. at him, do something like this, yeah. changes the mindset. Yeah, it's evolution. I think it's an evolution you're seeing this, this team evolve. Different guys every week, whether it's defense or with offense, but certainly with two, uh, you, you look at two polarizing positions, a quarterback and a running back position led by two ruck, rookies and able to just look in that huddle and look at him and say, hey, you're our leader. That's unprecedented. You don't, you don't see that happen too often. And you've, really, you've never seen it in the history of this league, uh, a rookie at those two positions producing the way these guys have here uh, early on. The uh, Dallas defense, Aaron Rodgers, to be fair, hasn't really looked like Aaron Rodgers over the last few weeks, but the Cowboy defensive effort had something to do with that today as Green Bay turns it over four times. Talk about that Dallas secondary a little bit. Well, I, I, the, originally in the, in the beginning of the game, I don't think the, the, the defensive front didn't help the secondary. Uh, they struggled to get pressure on Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers wasn't vintage Aaron Rodgers, but this secondary has given them an opportunity to, to more or less get by with the lack of pressure because they're all they're so talented. Byron, uh, Byron, you know, Byron Jones, Jones yeah. that was one hell of a, a play right there. That could have been easily a touchdown, but 
this makes a play. But we've seen that week in and week out, different guys, especially in the back end and secondary. Bayer Church gets an interception today. Uh, it, and so the secondary is the strength of this, this football team. On the front end, you know, you look in the front and uh, the pass rush, David Irvin had a big, a big day. It's kind of an unheard, uh, unheralded hero that we hear every week or a, a guy. Uh, but just think of the notion of getting two or three really good pass rushers with the real, what I think is a very outstanding secondary because they're so deep. It's probably a good time for the bye for that secondary. Um, Claiborne, you know, collided with yeah. Sean Lee, and it looked like uh, Barry Church may have gotten dinged up a little bit late in the game as well. Let's go big picture now with that NFC uh, East and the standings. The Cowboys off next week, host the Eagles two weeks from tonight. Dallas at five and one. Washington has now won four straight at four and two. Philly 3-2 and two, lost again today to that Washington team, and uh, the Giants beat the Ravens today, so the Giants 3-3. Three and three. So that NFC East that everybody assumed was just going to be god-awful, you know, doesn't, doesn't look that bad. Everybody's you got at least three wins, which 500 uh, most or divisions about, can't way say. Above 500. Uh, still, for the Cowboys to lead it six weeks in, pretty pretty remarkable. Yeah, and I don't think any, they could have predicted that this would happen going into the bye week, 5-1. and one. I don't think that anyone expected that. I mean, come on, let's just not kid ourselves. But going to 5-1 and one with all the confidence they created and having a week to think about and getting ready for the Philadelphia Eagles, it couldn't have came at a better time. And to me, as a, as a player going into a week where you have time to just kind of get away from it, all the confidence. It's almost like this, though, Mike. Let's not stop the momentum now. Let's keep playing through it. But I think that they'll do, do, do a great job of continuing that because – they get some time to rest and hopefully get some players healed up and get players back. Let's wrap up with the topic again that everybody's talking about, and that's the quarterback question. Assuming Romo is healthy, we, we, we both given our opinions thinking that Prescott should remain the starter. Do you think that's what the Cowboys will decide? Do you think that's what Jason Garrett and Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones and whoever else is in on this decision will decide? Or once Romo's fully ready to go, do you still think he'll get his shot to I, I think the decision was made today. And by Dak Prescott, the way he played today, they're 5-1. and one. They can't run away from that. You cannot change the momentum. I mean, this thing is, this, this machine is clicking. You cannot, you cannot change that right now, especially the direction they want to go. I think every player is confronted with the an inevitable, and that's one day I'm going to be, you know, I'm, uh, I'm not going to be playing in the National Football League. And unfortunately, that's what happened. So it wasn't Tony Romo's fault that he got, uh, he got hurt. But it's sure in the hell not Dak Prescott's fault that he took his position because he's earned the starting job for this franchise. One thing Troy Aikman said today in the telecast is, and he, he agrees that Dak should continue, but he also said it's very likely that the Cowboys will need Tony Romo at some point still this year. And we'll see about that. I do know this, knowing Romo, and you've known him for a long mm -hmm. time, that, that's a guy with the kind of mindset, well, he won't be happy about this if that's the way it goes down. He is a team guy. He's not going to cause a disruption, and he'll be ready to play when, in fact, it comes his time to play again. But it looks like this is Dak's football team uh, for the foreseeable future. Man, I can't believe we're saying that six weeks into the season. Tony Casillas, thanks very much. <laughs> thanks, Mike.